So, hi everybody. Uh, good afternoon, almost. Um, my name is uh, Chaim, and I am the CTO of Banca Poalim, and I can assure you a couple of things. One, I'm not an entrepreneur, so you're not going to get a pitch about uh, innovative technologies right now. The second thing is, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to give you a different perspective on what you heard uh, throughout the day around how this transformational technology around the automotive vertical is going to change financial services. And as long as money makes the world go around, uh, I think that you should pay attention and listen because, after all, uh, there's very few things that we can do without funding them or using dollars, euros, or whatnot. So, um, the last thing is, I'm, I'm actually here to thank you. And, and I want to thank you because you're making my dream come true. And my dream started with this kind of ingrained in my mind. The year was 1982. And those of you who were teenagers around those years already know what I'm talking about. And the notion of an autonomous car or putting technology to use in order to create an artificial intelligence that will accompany, uh, accompany us on the roads was ingrained in our brains back in 1982. And thanks to the Germans and, and David Hasselhoff, we saw Kit. And Kit, which was uh, uh, the car in the, in the TV show Knight Rider, was the first um, autonomous or AI or car that actually got a main part in, in a mainstream uh, um, TV series. And, and ever since, we realized and we, we, we strive to change the world. We, we, we try to see how sci-fi actually changes the world that we live in. And if we, we fast forward 35 years to today, uh, we actually see that the world that we live in right now is very, very different than the world that we grew up in. These are just a couple of the things uh, or the companies and innovators that are changing the way that we live on a daily basis. And, and as a part of my job within the CTO organization, leading the CTO organization at the bank, we have the Innovation Labs. And the Innovation Labs is a group of very uh, skilled technical individuals that dissect technology, groundbreaking technology, and try to derive the implications and the changes on how that will impact our daily lives. Eventually, what we do, we service customers, both retail, personal, commercial, enterprises, and we try to understand how your lives and needs changes throughout the life cycle. So, so we realize that our world is changing, but being a father of four, I can tell you that nothing shows change more than the freeware game of Fortnite. Now, those of you who have kids, no matter where you live in the world, know what that is. It is a free game. You log in, you start playing, right? But this free game actually made over a billion dollars in a couple of months throughout 2018. So the freeware and, and revenue streams are totally disconnected from one another, making financial instruments or paradigms uh, very different. So looking at autonomous cars, I want to share with you some of the things that we picked up as we were discussing the potential implication and changes to the world. These are really kind of highlighting what you heard throughout the day. So I'm not expecting you guys to see anything new over here. But we're thinking about the structure of car dealerships as leasing models grow and, and evolve and how that will impact, right? After all, the numbers that we heard today varied from 4% to 6%, but everybody uh, assured and realized that we use our car less than 10% throughout the year, right? So it's an asset that just sits there in the parking lot. Drivers, professional drivers, we talked about what will happen to their jobs and how will that look like. Uh, what are we going to do when we're trying to create jobs in the marketplace and the technology actually disables and, and, and renders them uh, uh, um, obsolete? Um, what are we going to do with police officers? What are we going to do with law enforcement? So if, if we are able to, implicate, uh, to implement the governing rules within a software, we trust the software to actually do everything for us. So no more parking violations and no more uh, traffic violations. And if you look at how much money New York State has made through the fines on parking violations within one year, what will happen to that revenue stream? And eventually Medicare and, 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 and professional cares, uh, um, doctors, nurses, 
Uh, we all um, are aware of injuries and deaths associated with the automotive industry. Um, if we can actually take that down by a few percent, it would be amazing from a humanitarian standpoint. But on the other hand, do we need as many hospitals as we, we have right now? And do we need to focus them on trauma or triage or what, what, what not? So being a technologist, what we've done, we took that and we identified four areas or four decision points that we need to adopt as a bank, okay? The first one is harness new technology. We're all in, up to our eyeballs, in AI and VR and AR and machine learning and deep learning and all the models that we you just described over here accompanied by trust enabling technologies like blockchain and distributed general ledger and so on. Uh, we realized that we need to embrace the change. Somebody stand on, stood over here on the stage and said, listen, nobody can stop technological changes. And, and we realized that. So we're embracing the change and we're looking at it and how we uh, embed that into the thought process to rewrite financial services. This is nothing short than actually rewriting the code that financial services is running on and redefine the trust model, which is critical. Because all of you guys talked about IoT, sensors, communicating between cars and entities. And the only thing that it means to me is that I have to turn on my radar and start mapping the areas that are changing in the world. And when we do that, we prioritize the work that we're doing. And when we prioritize the work that we're doing, we're able to extract four transformation domains. Now, if you haven't paid attention to what I said this far, you should bring uh, home two things. One, I like Knight Rider, and I'm a sci-fi enthusiast. And the second thing is, these are the four elements that will change the way that you run your business. So please pay attention. The first thing is the sharing economy. And the sharing economy is critical because it changes the underpinning assumptions on how we actually uh, deliver and, and, and construct financial services. Okay, not an asset-based or an ownership-based model, but actually a shared model, which is critical even to allocation of credit. Okay? <clears throat> the second thing is open banking. Absolutely critical because today, if you're going to be front-ended by a company that sells a service for autonomous cars, transport, uh, transportation service, so you need to get from one place to another, you're not dependent on your physical asset as the car. You're dependent on a service provider that will dispatch a car that will meet you on the curb and will take you from one, sp one spot to the other totally autonomously. And, and, and that is a big change in the way that these guys will need to communicate with us and settle everything from payment down to uh, loans, credits, risk, privacy, and we talked about cyber over here uh, throughout the day, but it's, it's, it's critical to all those elements. Append to the thing that we said around hacking into cars, and now try to imagine that that car is plugged into your bank account as well. In order to create the trust, there is a heavy investment to understand what DLT, sorry about the abbreviation down there, distributed ledger technology. That is the underpinning architecture around blockchain. Everybody associates blockchain with cryptocurrencies. I'm here to tell you there's much more behind that. Um, financial Services 2.0. Um, we're at the crust of the revolution. This is where we rewrite financial services. This is where we actually uh, diversify revenue models as financial services. This is where we, we understand that money flows in different ways and we have to adopt to that. And also we're looking at the macro implications of, of how that will change, right? Uh, even the resident relationship with the municipality. If you're not feeding money into the municipality uh, uh, um, um, pocketbook through fines, how will that money churn in? How will that get in? If you have an autonomous car and it doesn't generate parking violations, there is a $2 billion gap in the cash flow in New York City. So something has to give. And we talked about it. We heard about the 200 petabyte number and estimation, which means that we are no longer, as human beings, as carbon-based life forms, we are no longer equipped to deal with that data. We're done. Our era is over, which means that we need to relinquish control into machines and make sure that we're doing this in a right and responsible way. Uh, so this is going to be the AI-driven economy. It looks like the machine is taking over not only our cars, our lives, but also our money, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing if you know how to do it. Um, 
So you look at all those four elements and you try to imagine how will that impact our lives. I just try to give you a couple of words or, or areas to think about how will that impact your lives in those areas. But there's much more than that. The correlation between how will this impact your daily lives and the way that you actually conduct your business and your personal lives is tremendous. Um, so let's sum it up. I'm, I'm, I'm over time. I'm asking for another 45 seconds. Um, we've summoned the future, okay? And I try to think back on where, why is AI or autonomous cars is so um, easy to embrace. So we started in 1982 with the Knight Rider. 1984, uh, Electric Dreams with Edgar the Computer, which was very likable and fell in love with, with uh, 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 the human character. Jarvis, that serves uh, um, 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 Iron Man on a daily basis. We have Dolores right now with Westworld as, as a humanoid. R2-D2, definitely my favorite robot within the Star Wars uh, uh, trilogy. And we can all remember the, the replicants uh, with Brett Blade Runner that actually made this movie such an epic creation as it is. So the only thing that I have for you guys is we're counting on you, I'm counting on you to make my dream since that 1982 epiphany a reality. I'm hoping that you're going to make my dreams come true. So let's go and make it happen. Thank you very much.